Greetings and welcome to the Department of Tangents podcast, Season 2, Episode 4, A Conversation with Musician Rob Kovacs. At first glance, Rob Kovacs seems to have wildly divergent interests in music. His latest album, Let Go, is lush and rhythmic piano pop. It's organic and melancholy and tells a very human story about snakebit would-be lovers who can't come together and yet can't quite find their way out of each other's orbits. It's built for sepia-toned sunlight and dry, scattered leaves. Look again and you see his alter ego, 88-Bit, who orchestrates the mechanical soundtracks of throwback video games for a piano. The music from Let Go seems as far as you can get from the three-channel ditties on your average NES system, but keep listening and you'll hear how they blend together, how they merge in Kovac's particular style. We discussed both sides of Kovacs in this conversation on a particularly nice day in his hometown of Cleveland. You can even hear the birds chirping in the background through his open window. Here's Rob Kovacs. I want to start with Let Go, the new album. I have a a couple of different phrases to describe it. I want to see if you agree uh, with my assessment of it. I would say that it's it's tuneful piano pop, uh, melancholy oftentimes with rhythm driven by an active left hand on the the, the piano. Would you say that that sort of gets people in the ballpark of, of what they would be listening to? That's very accurate. Yeah, you thank you for listening to the record. And even noticing, yeah, the left hand. No one really mentioned that as much this album because there's all the other instruments that are also, you know, taking up a lot of space. But yeah, I do have a very active and rhythmic left hand on the piano. So would you say that this is a concept album? There's a there's at the very least an arc to it. Would you do you consider all of these songs of a piece in one story? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, both musically and. Uh, lyrically lyrically they tell a story kind of from beginning to end mm-hmm. of you know surrounding a relationship but and then musically they're all they were all written at the same time they're all started at least at the same within the couple same couple of years if you had to tell the the story here i have my own sort of version of it but uh i have interviewed people in the past where i've said oh this song is obviously about this and they sort of go sure <laughs> yeah i think there's two schools of thought of songwriting you can have a clear idea and i want to write the song about this idea or just you know make something kind of amorphous lyrically and let it create or evoke some other emotion in the listener Mm -hmm. i kind of come i don't know i like both in this case yeah the album is is um very uh reference or um inspired by a relationship that that i was in and um it kind of just goes from the beginning to the end and the main theme is just like never really quite connecting like Mm -hmm. this constant um desire to connect with someone or be with someone and then you know you just it never quite could have quite gets there Mm -hmm. yeah that's that's mainly i actually wrote almost exactly that Uh, (laughs) but there's a recurring theme of a narrator not being able to make a connection and i suppose it could have been with a series of people but it seems like it's it's more one person over a fairly long period of time there are sort of interstitial pieces in this. You start with uh, like fade, which is the you know an introduction motif, and then fizzle away where things seem to be oddly enough, despite the title, more optimistic. And then there's this middle piece, literally called interlude, which is the the, the sort of re- repeated motif with I can't I couldn't tell if it was a clarinet behind it. What was something sort of buzzing up and bubbling? Maybe a guitar. It's two guitars. Mm-hmm. And there's three guitars ultimately. But yeah, it's just three guitar. It's a guitar, acoustic guitar. I don't actually remember if it's acoustic or electric. Playing the same note, three different strings playing on the middle C, basically. So it's just... Ah, okay. That's what that was. I couldn't quite figure it out. It had the yeah, effect it's... of like in a movie where uh, the, the pages of a calendar are being ripped off. Uh, oh, good. So that's what it felt like to me, like the passage of time. There's definitely two sections to this the maybe we will and then the a lot of time has passed and now i'm bitter about it um, yes <laughs> yeah. yes yes very very good very very fairly accurate time time is is, is ambiguous in this as well it, it can be uh really short definitely that interlude is what i was going for was just you know kind of feeling stuck and your thoughts just going 
constantly. So you're in one place, but your brain is, is going all over the place. So that was kind of the guitar. That's what the guitar is trying to emulate there. There's definitely an evocative uh, feeling from a lot of this. Partly because of that active left hand, you have like these sort of active figures below a, a sort of more languid vocal uh, line, which to me could, there's a certain melancholy to this that almost feels like describing depression to me, all this stuff going on underneath. And then there, the surface might seem like somebody's not doing much, but there's all this stuff going on underneath. I like that representation. I, yeah, I never quite thought of it that way. But if you think of things like Radiohead, which is kind of depressive music or similar, you know, long lines and then all this other stuff going on underneath. That's a good, uh, I, I like that. Yeah, it's a good representation. So how long were you working on Let Go? Uh, good question. I started recording this album in 2014. Mm -hmm. and it came out just this year. So that's a long time in itself. I started writing these songs in 2007, 2008. So that's an extra added long time. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, when I started recording this album, I didn't, uh, I recorded about 15 songs total and didn't, only four of them, only four of the songs on this album were in that initial 15 batch and then they um just didn't really fit with the other tracks some of the ones i really wanted to use like here in the future and bitter memory were ones i really felt proud of i wasn't even going to use fizzle or should have but they were all kind of the same theme and the same kind of feeling and they didn't fit with everything else so i was like well i'll just make this separate and make it an ep and then i had these other two songs that i hadn't finished but i started back in the same time period so i was like well i can finish them and kind of help tell the story even more and uh, then made it an album, added some of the other interlude stuff. And so that's kind of how it came came to be. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's interesting that you, you're trying to tell uh, something based on a true story. And that takes so much time to sort of get to what you want to get to, to make that what you want it to be. Yeah, like uh, I really, I didn't really set out to write this album like that it was just like oh i kind of have these songs they're all from the same time period they're all about the same they're all inspired from the same thing mm -hmm. i can kind of make that i guess another influence would be a musical called last five years when i think about it i think that's i think it's an influence by jason robert brown it's just two people and their relationship basically uh -huh. so it's a very very bare bones musical but it's very like intense and also just like for the writer's perspective like it's a very vulnerable thing to do to just write a musical about your life basically <laughs> he ended up getting like kind of sued i think by his ex <laughs> so all the time saying i'm nowhere near that that realm but um yeah just the idea i think that idea of like taking something of your of your life making it a concept making it as art is you know nothing crazy but mm -hmm. that was definitely an inspiration well how close did this wind up coming to your actual experience to the story behind the, that inspired this fairly accurately <laughs> it's pretty uh, accurate. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't really, I didn't really change up one, one thing. There's like one lyric where I say three days instead of two days, and the reality was only two days. Like, but I like mm -hmm. the way three sounded. Like that's about as inaccurate as it gets. Yeah, sometimes yeah. you just you need a, a line to to rhyme or fit or, or rhythm. Yeah. yeah. So, how much of this story of the background would, of this uh, of let go do you want to? Do you feel comfortable telling people about? Or is that why you um, wrote the thing in the first place? Because you didn't want to tell people they here, just listen to this. No, I'll just... I guess you can ask questions and if something feels uncomfortable, I guess I won't I won't ask. I won't answer. The only thing I would hesitate is I don't ever want to talk bad about someone else. So, mm -hmm. which well, I, the, I, don't but, I don't have any reason to. It doesn't sound like this doesn't come off to me as there being a, a heavy in here. There doesn't seem to be you know uh, somebody's right and somebody's wrong it seems to me that there are two people who were in each other's orbit for a long time and just never managed to make the, you know, keep going back to the word connection but can never uh, manage to make that connection even if at one point both of them wanted to yeah that's very accurate that's very accurate mm. and it's clear i really try to make it my experience not about the other person mm -hmm. D does this other person know that there's this thing uh, about them out there they do, <laughs> they do. They do. <laughs> it was kind of funny how it came about because i originally had i didn't really intend to do to, to let her know that it was about her but um i had written working on this new song and i just titled it for myself like this is the song about 
her, you know, with the rest of the album. So this is, you know, uh-huh. this is in that category. I don't have a name yet. And that was like the working title was her name. And then, um, so I sent it to the drummer with that title in there. And then we played a show and I hadn't seen her in a long time, but we started to like kind of reconnect at this show re- around this time. And so she came to the show and I introduced heard the drummer and he recognized the name and jokingly he was like oh is this the same person that is this the you know is this the, the in this in that song and i was like the, actually it yeah it is <laughs> thanks <laughs> buddy <laughs> but even then I, I actually even then i think about it i had told her like there's a you know there might be a song or two that you might recognize you might that might be about you or something so but i think in most i think in all she was uh, flattered by it to have these uh, songs about inspired by her, you know, mm. which I, I would I, hope so, honestly, even though, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say the, the intent wasn't to, to make her out as the heavy. I don't think. No, no, not at all. But I've, I've interviewed comedians frequently where they talk directly about their family or their exes sometimes when they're in the audience and there's always that sort of high wire of of hey this is about you here we go that's sort tough. Of. oh man that's tough that is tough i've been in that situation too i've heard someone tell a story or that was about me <laughs> in the audience. Uh-huh. yeah it's uh, weird on both ends so you get this to where you want it to be and then you're about to release it and a pandemic hits do you think about maybe waiting until the pandemic is over to, to release this so you can sort of tour with it properly and, and support it i mean the intent was yeah always to do a, a tour with it but it already been so long <laughs> <laughs> i'd already been working on this record so long so and honestly it just things just worked out where it finally was released because um it, i can't i don't have a good reason why it took so long it took a long time to record the piano parts it took a long time to get the other tracks added and then i added songs and then we added strings and then so just kept changing things here and there and the mixing took a while and i would want to change this or change that and then we get it mastered mastering took a while mm-hmm. and i had a you know this is all i have my other my job is a full-time musician so i'm always like i always have a lot of things going on so no one's forcing me to do this so this kept getting pushed aside you know uh-huh. so that's my best <laughs> reason why it took so long and then um, I just happened to meet this, uh, someone introduced me to a publicist and then that kind of got the ball rolling. It's like, okay, you know, let's just get, you know, what do we need to do to get this, get this out? And it just happened to be, you know, mid pandemic, but it was, you know, it's ultimately, I'm just glad it's, it's finally out. I do hope to do some sort of tour. Um, I'll probably have two albums out by the time I have, I do this, I do a tour. So that'd be interesting. So you've got but another like one to- ready to go. Yeah, completely different. It's a, a video game soundtrack for a mm. VR game, a virtual reality game called Straylight, and it's all synth instrumentals. Is that the one you you released a few singles uh, in February of this year? Is that the one that is that related to that project? Let's see, the album came out in, in February. I don't think I released any singles of that project. Okay. Uh, I think the only singles I officially, oh, unless you're thinking of 88 bit that yeah. is separate that is totally different okay oh this is so this is video game music under your own under, my own under your own name we should get into that we'll just sort of put all of what you've done together let let go to me sounds like if you compare it to uh return of simple which was y- your oh. previous project it still sounds like you but there is something very different about let go from that and there's something well, we'll save uh, we'll save eighty eight bit for the question after this one. That, but it does seem to to be of a piece with what you've done before. But there's something qualitatively different about Let Go than those previous albums. Do you feel that's accurate? Yeah, very much. Thank you for listening to my old band too. <laughs> so, Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, the main the similarity is these songs were written around two thousand seven, two thousand eight, or started at that time. And that time, the band was very full swing. Lyrically, they're much more vulnerable and much more introspective and uh, you know more personal, which where is where I'm trying to go, I guess, with music, always trying to be like more honest and more real. 
you know, music, writing music for me is a kind of way to, as a cliche is, you know, music expresses the inexpressible mm. and that's different for everybody. You know, some people can are more free to express others aren't and tend to turn to art. <laughs> so uh, writing music is literally a way to help express things I can't totally understand or put into words. Yeah, that's that's the main difference. It's definitely a more vulnerable record. Plus, there's guitar on it, so that's an obvious difference. <laughs> uh, well, the, the, there's there are a couple of songs that sort of, you know, opportunity. Maybe the song from uh, was was Saffron the last album. Uh, yeah, return, that might be the one that sounds the most like what Let Go turned out to be. Yeah, that's a good pick. That's one I still play. That's one I like to play by the most off that album. Mm-hmm. And yeah, similarly, it's more more honest. It also is a more de- that that's more de- about depression that songs. So. Uh-huh. <laughs> I guess it fits with this album. The the next like song album I have, like I said, I recorded about eleven other songs, um, mm-hmm. which aren't as heavy, you know, as as this. They're much mm-hmm. more similar. I just you know they're just more fun. Just they're not as heavy yet. It's just not as heavy. So mm-hmm. well, that'll be the third pop record. Let go is 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 heavy psychologically, but I wouldn't say that it's it, it's definitely not a dirge like record. There's a lot of movement within the songs and and from song to song. And the the capper on this is is bitter memory, uh, and I love where that sort of ends up because I the bitter memory starts starts out saying you know I'm I I don't want you in my life anymore. I thought I told you that I don't want us anymore. Uh, I've had enough of hell for one life is, is, <laughs> is, is one. It's this, this very, I'm doing this for me. I'm pushing you away. I'm done with this. I'm done with this. And then the uh, the last verse is come on over. We could hang out for a while. It, it'd be nice to hear your voice and see your smile. If it gets too late, there's plenty of space to crash here for the night. You know, it'd be all right. I'm only here for three more days. And I'm not afraid to make mistakes. I, I like that whole sort of we're done. Go away. Go away. All right. Come on. It's OK. You can if you want to hang out for a night, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely a, a twist in in the song. And then, yeah, the, the final line after that is uh, couldn't you have let me know that years from then I'd still not let go. Yeah. So, yeah. Just admitting that I. You know this the narrator whatever can't uh, can't let go of this person no matter how, no matter how much mm-hmm. the logically they want to emotionally they takes over and they are wow. par- they're weak. <laughs> <laughs> well, I find myself you know th- through like the first two thirds of that song you know rooting for the narrator is like ah you did it you're you're past it like, no 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 don't do <laughs> it don't back. do it. <laughs> yeah. So and the, yeah, the title of the album. I mean, it's that that. that you know, there's several albums with that same title, but it was too fitting, I think, for this. I had to use it. So, and it has two meanings. One is like, you know, the you know the process of letting go of of something, but it also wanting to be you know let go from by someone else. The, mm-hmm. the question of being like, or the the ask of like, leave me, <laughs> like let me, yes. let me go as well. It goes both ways. Yeah, it's 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 both a, a, an order and a process. Uh, depending on w- really which lyric you're on within a song even yeah and that that's speaking of passage of time that song really ends up that song alone spans like three like years it spans years so like one verse references being a few months and then that last line has now been several years later yeah the album sort of bookended by I think the the two catchiest songs, Fizzle is sort of the the first one. Fizzle's the sort of more optimistic one, oddly enough. Well, I don't know. How optimistic would you say is Bitter Memory? Not. Not. Not okay. optimistic. <laughs> um, just more admission, like acceptance. Like that's the difference. That one is acceptance that like I can't. It's going to be up to me, no matter what, to 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 you know the singer up to 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 leave and to let go and to accept that this this pull for the situation has is is real. And in that moment, he still he still hasn't. That's the thing. He he feels like I've moved on, but realizes, you know, God, I really haven't. <laughs> I still need more work to do. 
Well, the great line in there is, is the kind of thing you'd see in, in fiction is I'm only here for three more days, which makes you wonder, well, what, wait, what's the, uh, what's the situation? Why are you only here for three, three more days? That's sort of the thing that sticks in your head that, that makes you, uh, that pulls you into that particular piece. I think that detail that you don't, you, you're not allowed to, to, to have an answer for. Cool. <laughs> yeah, that's the line I was saying. It was actually, uh, it, yeah, it's based on, on reality. I was living in New York at the time and then visiting home for a couple of days. Mm, and home is uh, in Ohio? Yeah, Cleveland, Ohio. Mm-hmm. And that, is that where you are now? Yep. We actually have a nice day for once, finally. Uh, a nice day <laughs> in Cleveland. That could be a song title as well. <laughs> yeah. A lot, a lot of songs about, about Cleveland. So well, let's add the uh, the third piece to this. You have let go under your own name. You uh, you had return of simple. Who is eighty eight bit and why is he not uh, Rob Kovacs? That was a side project I started while doing working on this record, and then totally other idea. The eighty bit is a project to make piano arrangements of video game music, mainly NES music or the Nintendo Entertainment System, the original Nintendo. So that's just video game covers. Mm, which goes back to your uh, collection of NES. Yes. Yes. I will, I, I will show you. <laughs> Since I was spawning up your background, I'll show you my, my video game collection here. Wow. Okay. Uh, for the listeners, that's a very, very <laughs> tall shelf uh, full of NES cartridges. That, that has to be close to all of them. It's a little over half. There's like 684. It's quite a bit. So that's about a little over half. 84 that they ever made or 684 that you you have? 684, I might be off by the number a bit, uh, official Nintendo, North American Nintendo releases. And I have a little over half of that. Wait, so that that is somebody who is serious about collecting because you know the number... <laughs> You, you, know, yeah. you know the number that, that exists. Yeah, and it's ambiguous because if you add like the ones in Europe that weren't released over here or vice versa, or of course <laughs> the Famicom games, which are the, the Japanese version of the Nintendo, and they have their own games and they don't even have the, and then they don't have all the games that were over in North America. So it's, yeah, that's cool. That's a cool. It's a rough estimate of the amount of games that are available. So what, what draws you to video game music? I grew up playing video games. I mean, like a lot of us, specifically, I had uh, nine arcade games uh, growing up. My family had these arcade games growing up. So it was definitely a part of my life. And, you know, getting a Nintendo as a kid was the cool, was the best Christmas gift ever. Mm-hmm. And uh, specifically, what draws me to it now is, you know, aside from the nostalgia, it's a fascinating part of music history that is overlooked unless you're already in the video game music world. Mm-hmm. It's one of the first massly mass consumed examples of computer music. It's essentially what it is. Mm-hmm. They would program the, the Nintendo sound chip to perform the music. So, you know, nothing's recorded on these. It's just running through code and making these sounds. And, um, you know, it's very unique. <laughs> it's in the mm-hmm. you know, early mid eighties and um, trying to play that on piano is very interesting and a, an extra challenge because there was written in a way that they don't have to worry about human playability so that's you know there's a lot of limitations for the composers they only had really <clears throat> total five channels but they really only had three channels to work with only three of them could produce pitches mm-hmm. there's also a noise channel and then a sample channel which some composers have actually kind of used as well so very limited with the amount of notes they can get but powerful in this fact that they don't have to worry about speed you know the designer can play almost as fast as possible as faster than humanly way faster than humanly possible uh, um you know leaps all over the place so you can you could do a lot you just gave you a lot of power as a composer um so as a performer and arranger taking what was not intended to be performed by humans and playing it on piano uh is i think really cool and uh, a fun challenge for me and additionally it's very it's impressive to hear and my main one of my main goals is to help shed light on some of this lesser known video game music that unless you played through the game, all the way through the game, and some of these games are pretty tough and almost unplayable, um, you're not going to hear the music uh, at all. And and there's a lot of great music in these, you know, kind of buried in these games. 
Right, right. I never thought of that sort of aspect of it. Like you, you think of of audio files searching through, you know, record shops or pawn shops or whatever for that hard to find record nobody's heard. But you, you've got to search through like the twelfth boss to to find yeah. that that bit of music that you enjoy. Yeah, yeah, that's a nice comparison. And that's my justification for buying all these games. It's like, well, I'm, I have to explore the music, so. Well, you have and to get. Been... You have to get good at the game too to be able to to access all the music. Is is there music you know is somewhere, but you just can't play the game well enough to get to it? Um, at, at, the, at this point, someone's pretty much ripped every soundtrack okay. online, so you can find almost everything on on the, online. And if there's a game that's too difficult, I do have a game genie, which allows you to cheat a little bit at the game. Mm. So I have use that i do make a rule that if i'm going to arrange a game i want to at least have played through the whole thing like understand how the music works uh -huh. you know because there's all the different like sound effects that get in there that can be part of the soundtrack as well uh or at least perceived as a soundtrack so yeah i want to make sure i understand the game as best as possible i can actually kind of hear the the influence of video game music in a couple of different places like uh let it stay lost has this very clipped riff, uh, a sort of clipped, repeated riff that sounds like it could be like a Mario Brothers kind of uh, bit to it. So that this uh, this music influenced you as as a a, a writer and a, a composer as well. I'd say it has to. I th I'd say it had to before I even realized it. Um, mm. You know, playing these games, it's I didn't even you know growing up didn't really. You, you notice the music, but I didn't really think of it the same way I would think of it as like records that I was listening to, like Beatles and Led Zeppelin and mm -hmm. classic rock or, or Weezer or whatever. I didn't think of it quite the same. And really no one did around the U.S. <laughs> mm -hmm. Certainly not our parents. It's just it's just toy sounds, really. Um, but those the harmonies are unique. I noticed I like in my own music, I like a lot of mode switching, which is kind of switching between major and minor mode in your chord progressions. Mm -hmm. and um not a lot of like dominant tonic sounds and um that's a combination of both rock music and video game chord progressions like you get a lot of mode mixture and a lot of like Mega Man stuff mario uh zelda mm. and i have to and i would say that that's definitely influenced my the type of music that i like without me realizing it back then so to, to sort of uh, uh, wrap up, do you have uh, a new album you're working on? When can people expect that? And and how would you, not to manage people's expectations too much, but how what would you say to people about what that sounds like, how that compares to, to Let Go? It would be pretty hard to find a link between those two albums. Hmm. Maybe. Album. Yeah. Um, sonically, this new album, Sonically, Let Go's rock band, Mm -hmm. this new album is synth rock that's like almost prog synth edm mm -hmm. so it's all instrumental um it's all retro synth i'm using a profit five almost for everything which has a very warm sound um think of like everything that's right place by radiohead um 80 you know, a lot of 80s like synth sounds it's not the dx7 but it's kind of like it's, it's just a warmer analog sound and it's very high energy it's very floaty um mm -hmm. this game's this game you're basically floating around space in vr and it's super fun mm -hmm. um so the album should the, the game's coming out in the third quarter so sometime around august mm -hmm. um so the album should come out around then as well um unless there's snags but it should come out around around then as well can you say what, what it's called it'll be called stray light soundtrack okay <laughs> so that's that's what it, that's what it'll be called so yeah. where, where can people uh keep track of that it'll be on my website as well Rob Kovacs music .com. Mm -hmm. I have a, a, a mailing list that I'm not great with. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I don't send on email enough as I should. That's the best. Or you can follow me on, on Twitter and Instagram, Rob Kovacs, at Rob Kovacs music. And then if you want to know more, more about 88-bit, which is totally separate, that's 88bitmusic.com. So thank you very much uh, for doing this interview. I appreciate it. Uh, the new uh, album is Let Go. Uh, and you can find that on Spotify and, and on the websites just mentioned. Thanks. Nick, thank you. This is a really great interview. It's great to talk with you.
Thanks again to Rob for the conversation. You can find his work at the places he just mentioned, but in case you missed them, his website is www.robkovacsmusic.com, and you can find him on Twitter and Instagram at at Rob Kovacs Music. You can also find 88-Bit at www.88bitmusic.com and on Twitter and Instagram at 88-Bit Music. Follow him there for tour and new release info. And if you liked this episode of the Department of Tangents podcast, please consider subscribing on Apple and Google and Spotify and all the various and sundry places so you never miss an episode. And find more material at www.departmentoftangents.com. And please tell your family and friends, whoever you think might like this, spread the links. And thanks for listening. Yeah, yeah.